your best requires commitment. We share that dedication to excellence. Introducing new Titleist 917 medals, the standard for complete performance. A fantastic finish, James. Birdie, birdie, birdie. I mean, you really caught fire after the 10th hole. I have to say it's been a while since we've had you in the media center. Can you tell us where you've been? Oh man, I've been everywhere I think in the last, uh, since I was in the media center, it's probably like about five years, but um, just been in America. Uh, I lost my web.com card last year, uh, which I was on for the last five years. Yeah. Um, and uh, just all year was doing mini tours and qualifiers in America. So I suppose you could say I was just spending a lot of money. <laughs> and did you did you feel when you were in the States the last couple of tournaments that you played, could you feel your game turning round? Is this a surprise to you? Is it sort of just out there or you've been building towards this? Yeah, America's really tough. I I didn't see this coming but could because in America I think the last event I played the cut was eight under and twenty eight under won the tournament. So um, I think I shot six under and missed the cut and you're like, well, you know, I played okay. but mm. um, And then I came home, I played pretty good in Fiji, um, didn't putt well and it's, it's very difficult there. And then I've uh, been playing some pro-ams around Newcastle and mm. um, played the New South Wales Open last week and shot three under and missed the cut. But it sort of felt pretty good and the last six, seven holes, and that's another course you couldn't really gauge your game for the week because everyone's going low. And, um, yeah, so I had my coach down here uh, on Tuesday. Just We just worked on something little that um, I've worked on in the past. And, yeah, I, I, work, I added a, a couple techniques that I use with a, a mental guy in America. Called, his name's Steve Yellen, and... Um, it's just one of those things. You, this course is a great scoring course. You don't have to make everything and hole putts and hit everything close. You can build rounds here. So I didn't really have any pressure on myself out there. I, I think the back nine, we saw no one, So, yeah. um, which was our front nine, which was kind of pleasant. And um, the, to finish on the front nine today was actually really easy. The, I think the last five holes were all downwind and you're hitting... I think it was a four iron into the uh, the twelfth hole, which is the par five, and I hit it to two and a half feet there and made an eagle, and then um, made a par on the next, and then hit it to two and a half feet from a wedge in on the fourteenth, and then I mean I two putted sixteen and hit it to three feet on seventeen, and then hold about an eight for an eighteen, and they're all wedges in hand, so um, perfect scoring. Like coming through the front nine, um, it was very difficult. So um, you're playing. 15, 16, 17, yeah. well, 17 is downwind, but it's a four iron, and then you 18 all straight into the wind. So um, it was actually really good just to get through those and over the hump, and then um, it was a very pleasant front nine with uh, pretty perfect conditions. Not too windy out there for your front nine? No, just uh, the, the wind picked up a little bit. I've got sand all over me because I've hit about two trap shots where I, I ate pretty much half a glass of sand, and... Um, those, as I said, those 14, 15, 16, and 18 are all were all difficult. Like I think I had five iron into 18, which I hit it to the spot where everyone's hitting it. And um, you know, 16 today's a, a three shotter, and um, 15's a four, a, a six iron in, and four. So it's it's just difficult finishing on that backside. So it was, as I said, it was good to get through there with you know, pretty unscathed and um, just started playing really well on the front nine, which was our back. Terrific. Questions, please. Henry. Um, James, you mentioned uh, playing primes in, in Newcastle. Um, what sort of goes through your head when you're playing events like that, given the big events you've played in in the past and how much of a struggle mentally is that to be at that sort of slightly lower level of golf? Yeah, it's been a pretty rough last three years, golfing wise um you know i'm still enjoying it and it, it's it's just funny like playing mini tours this year in america and and you you're a 34 year old and you know you've been on the pga tour and you competed on the web and my game hasn't really changed much from then but you know you're staying in hotels which have cockroaches running around and um 
it's fun when you're a junior and when you just turn pro and it's exciting and you, I mean, not so much cockroaches, but um, you're excited and, and then as you get older and you experience more, and yeah, it's, it's a real battle. You, with the golf courses are very average in, on the mini tour level. You know, this is the best course I've played in so long where, you know, you can hit a putt and see it roll out and um, everyone's good. It's deeper over there. So you have a battle with your mind, especially like now I, I don't feel old, but I'm the older guy. And uh, these kids coming out that are 20, 21, and they're, they're just so full of, like, motivation. And, um, and I love competition and competing, but, yeah, it, it gets a little rough. So it just to the point where I'd, I spent a little bit of money this year, so I just came home, and I'd, I'd rather be playing pro-ams than sitting on the couch. And um, you still see a lot of guys like me that have been at a different level and, or a top of level and... You, you just got to do it, and it's a way of competing. And um, I didn't play too well in all the. Pro- I played okay in some of the proams, but for me, it's just it's it's a way to compete. I, I'm not a huge fan of beating balls on the range. I'd rather play and play for some money or be competitive. So yeah, it, it's not the it's not a fun feeling. But I'm I'm never I'm never one that's gonna you know a lot of people work really hard and have you know middle class jobs that they have to work. 60 hours a week so um, if I can just work really hard for four hours and get something out of it, 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 it really changes the perspective that you have Rog? James, you mentioned playing the mini tours where 28 under wins, you shoot 6 under you miss the cut and go home, all those sort of, is that good for your game? Um, to try and keep your game in shape, that sort of golf? Yeah, see, in America as I said, I, I, I've got past winners status on the web.com and I thought I would have got more starts this year but um, the system's not really great over there. So past years I would have played four or five events, but this year I got one event and um, it was the actual the event I won. So it's, it's really hard it, to not put a round in your head before you go out and play the course. So at this tournament here, I had no round. I was just going to go out and try to you know play decent and see what unfolds. But the amount of times I've gotten up in the morning at... Um, of a afternoon round in a tournament, a mini tour event in the morning, and ten unders leading, and you're like, I know it's an easy golf. The golf courses are a lot easier, but it's, it's very hard to play golf like that. And I, I think, I mean, I did like ten qualifiers this year, and um, I think three web.com qualifiers, eight under par. So this is one round. Eight under par didn't qualify to play in the tournament. So. It's it's getting to the point. Yes, we're on easy golf courses, but you put a hundred guys of our ability on an easy golf course for seven spots, and every four of them are going to shoot nine under or ten under. So, yeah, it's very hard. You you want to keep playing tournaments, but you and keep your game sharp for that tournament you might qualify for. But it really opened my eyes this year, and um, yeah, you, I think every week I was shooting two, three, four under and it, you're just getting zero out of it. So um, you really got to put your motivation in the right area before because it can just mentally like ruin you. Brent? James, you said, I mean, the, the, the lifestyle you're describing is not overly glamorous what, what, and you've been on the, the glamorous part. Of, what's kept you going? Why, why do you keep going? Do you know what I mean? um, is it because you've been there before and you know what it's like and you believe you can get there again or what's kept you going? I, yeah, I hate it to get a little depressing in here because I really love my life. So, um, but uh, it just—I love competing. I don't know if I, I could not get up in the morning and not have something to work towards. So, if I did have a job or some, you know, I'd have to really enjoy it. And it's not a money thing for me. Like when I talk about spending money, I just want to come out even every year and just show myself that I'm not losing money doing something that I think I'm really good at. So, um, yeah, it. You just a lot of guys have quit this year that are really good. I mean, I think Alastair Presnell, guy's an amazing golfer and nearly won Australian Opens and played on the web.com and I think he played a, a half a year on the PGA Tour and that was only three, four years ago and the guy's working at drumming golf or something. I'm not sure where he's working, but it's... So American can really beat you down and then I come home and I don't play great and I'm... Like, I've played good this week, but in some tournaments I don't play that good and I'm around the lead. So I'm like, I'm good enough to do what I'm doing and that's what, I think that's what you've got to ingrain in yourself that, yeah, I, 
a lot of also a lot of guys have given the game away and the real world's really tough so um it's uh yeah i just my being being able to know that i'm deep down that i'm really good at this game and i love to i love to be competitive so bruce yeah. james i know we've discussed this before and apologies for not remembering it but do you still have a base in dallas i do you um do? yeah i've been I, I was i gave up my rent this year my girlfriend took over my apartment just so i could save five thousand i knew i was going to be in australia for like five months so i'm not going to pay 1200 a month rent but yeah i've been renting there the last two years i had a place i bought a place when i was on the pga tour i had to sell that and then i rent rented in dallas the last three years yeah so when you come home to newcastle do you live do you have a place here or do you live with your with your mum or just what it, yeah my sister i'm staying with my mum and my sister while okay. i'm home um, while i've been home i think i've been home while i've been in australia i've only been home for three weeks so you know i'm on the road for the other six weeks and and then I've, obviously over christmas go home and just chill yeah is your girlfriend with you down here this this week no okay. um yeah i haven't seen her for about two months so she she knew that getting into the relationship but yeah she's coming over for a month uh just before Christmas. Larry? Uh, playing in Asia an option, James, or Europe, or are you going to stay in the, in the US and, and keep grinding? No, I mean, I went to uh, USQ school this year. It was, it was either I do Europe or I do um, US, and I really wanted to do Europe because I feel like it's a tour that if I get on, I could keep my card really easily on that the golf course the golf is a lot tougher and um not as deep as the web and better golf courses and but it would mean missing most of the aussie summer and yeah if i'd had a pretty good season or made a bit of money on the mini tours i i would have maybe gone to european q school but possibly going and missing and then just having and missing possibly two two to three big aussie events i was, i'd it wasn't an option, so I was hoping to go to US and get through. I think I shot five under and eight under was the number, obviously, to get through first stage. So, yeah, it was disappointing. But um, I think next year I'll probably look towards China or Canadian or Latin American tour. Uh, the mini tours, a couple events were great, but I, I need something to play towards. So playing on those tours you can actually get through to the web or get through to final stage so yeah but just having something to play towards is going to be the option is that okay ladies and gentlemen oh one more sorry sorry brendan you're right james leading halfway here at the australian open tough question would you take an australian open win now or would you prefer to hold on and win pga next week which gives you then exemption in europe I mean, are you guaranteeing both? But <laughs> <laughs> if I'll take the Aussie Open win, uh, if you're telling me which one I'd like to win, it'd be the PGA, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I I like the position I'm in right now, and um, yeah, it's been a while since I've been up the top of the leaderboard in an Australian Open or a PGA, so it's going to be pretty nerve-wracking out there. But uh, it's a good feeling. It's a it's um it's fun to be you know, in the mix at a, at a large event. Can you tell us about the Eagle on 12? How did that change your mindset, given that you'd really just been treading water at that stage for the rest of the round? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny you ask that. Like, you know, before the round, I played really well yesterday and I felt like I left two to three shots. Out. The course in the morning is it's really gettable. Um, it, it's like it's beautiful and no wind and um, but I was happy I got off to a good start and then yeah so you're walking around thinking man I, I just like to play the weekend of the Australian Open and um, I'm fairly confident I was going to make the cut but you, I haven't played well in a big event for so long that things creep in your mind so um, got off to a pretty good start today birdie I think at 11 and then cruised around and it got pretty rocky around 15 16 um where i had to i made a, a good six footer for par on 15 and a good 10 footer for par on 16 and then i missed about a three footer on 17 and i'm like you know go back to even par and good two putt on 18 good two putt on one so i'm i'm even but i'm right at, i'm thinking the cut's one under 
And um, I'm like, I'd just like to get a couple more birdies or something just to cushion, just play the weekend, work my way into the tournament. And um, so it was a bit uneasy with me. And then I hit a great drive off 12, smooth four iron. I, probably the best two consecutive shots I've hit all week. And it was good because I get up there and it's two and a half feet. So that's 90% make <laughs> or 99% make. So after that, it just felt like, all right, nice. I, I know I've got, I talked to myself and I'm like, oh, you just, just be patient. The, the rest of the, the holes on this nine are really easy today with that wind, which they were. And um, yeah, just a bit of stress was lifted. And um, actually a funny story on the next, uh, the two holes later, I'd hit um, onto the heat green, hit, thought I'd hit a great shot, um, figured I'd maybe inside 10 feet. And uh, Gareth hits after me, and the, you can't see the, the pin level of the green. And I get up there, and I was a bit further past than I thought, and I was about 20 feet behind the hole. I was like, man, I thought that would be pretty close, at least pin high. And anyway, get up, I was like, still happy with the shot. And the two marshals standing at the back of the green, they're like, oh, yeah, your ball was hit by Gareth's. So his ball, my ball was sitting at about 10 feet pin high, which is where I thought it would be. And his ball hit mine directly and sent it 15 feet, and his had went down. That was so. I just said, oh, "You guys are 100% sure?" They're like, "Oh yeah, 100% sure." The second ball got hit, and uh, so I said, "Can you move it?" You know, we called the rules official over. He's like, "Yeah, just move it as close as to where the point was." Uh, to be honest, I'd hope he went right down to about five feet, but uh, yeah, he put it about 10 feet, and I was like, "Oh, awesome!" You know, I've gone. It was sort of like a win, and then made that. And then, then by then I was just like, oh, I'm cruising. No one's out here. Everyone's watching Spieth, which as they should be. Um, pretty relaxing nine and hit it to two and a half feet on the next, like nine iron in and made a good sand save on the next. But then hit it on the par five, just on the back of the green for two, two putted. Next hole hit it about three and a half feet, which was beautiful. And then now I'm sort of like, oh, I've got to be around the lead and then hit sandwiched about eight feet on the last, and you just, I was like, oh, this is obviously to take the lead. Do I want to make it? Do I want to be the leader through, you know, and then poured that in. So, yeah, it's sort of, the eagle did kickstart things because it sort of took the, the pressure of myself knowing that I'd sort of have to fight to make the cut.